Hey, Quinn. Something at you. What are we doing tonight? I'm so happy that you asked. Tonight, we're gonna be working on Project Arc 7. Probably one of my most favoritest projects ever. Mostest favoritestest. Mostest favoritestest of them all. So, tonight's a very special installation. This is something I wanted for a very, very long time, and I've been putting it on the back burner because I thought I was gonna use this on the white FD, which I sold to Matthew. But I made a purchase from Japanland. Mr. Miya-san himself sent me this, pot, this box. And this has been my, I don't know what you would call this, my long time halo want exhaust for the car. So, let's see this thing. And this is exactly how they sent it to me. Of course, we took a look at it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I unwrapped it. I did a pre-inspection. Ooh. Oh. Can, you, can you give a little hand here, Matthew? Sorry, I was just Got a little, Googling. A little tape stuff there. This is their, their dolphin tail uh, three inch catback exhaust. And I am uber excited about it. And why would you ask dolphin tail kids? Well, flames go down. So flames go down because there are some RX-7 owners out there that can unfortunately say that they lit their car on fire because there's too many flames shooting out the back. And I went with Ari Memya because they use, they're almost like the racing beat of Japan. They use uh, thicker rotary specific mufflers that, are, that typically are a little bit more noise friendly and can tolerate the higher exhaust gas temps that the rotary produces. So, um, you know, I've used Magnaflow mufflers and hated them. Horrible, loud, droney. No good. Uh, racing beats have always done really well, except racing beats trying to streamline too much lately. So like, like on the RX-8, great system, full catless system is like stupid quiet. Sounds very good when you get on it, but they pinch the necks and stuff to like meet stock exhaust flanges, and I'm just like, guys, come on, come on. You want here. ultimate flow, you know, especially when that probably when costs probably me some it. purse purse. So <clears throat> we went with the RE. Now, I will say this, I bought this directly from Ari Memia. I was super excited. They said they built the order, so it was about a three month wait. But I paid 45,000 yen at checkout, which was somewhere in the vicinity of 345 doll hairs US. And for they, shipping. For shipping yeah. up front. So, like, the exhaust is like 800 and something dollars after conversion, plus another three something. I think the bill is like around 1200 bucks out the door. Well, they, they email me, hey, your exhaust is ready, but we can't ship EMS anymore for this size box. So it's another 45,000 yen shipping. So $690 for shipping, almost the cost of the exhaust, but it's here. And I just don't care anymore at this point because I'm not buying another one of these. So it's pricey. And Matthew's going to pay me top dollar for my twin tip racing. How, how about I pay half your shipping for that? Half my shipping? <laughs> That exhaust is like $900 here plus shipping from Racing Beat. Yeah, but we're not shipping it anywhere. We're saving, saving money. We'll work out a deal here. <laughs> Behind so, closed doors. <laughs> if anything, I feel like, because I'm such an Ari and fanboy, that they should sell me their Mark <laughs> 8 exhaust for, for discount. Because <laughs> I, I think I kind of want that too now. <laughs> but we're going to install this. Uh, this is kind of the last component I want to put on the car before we go in tune. Not that I suspect that exhaust will change too much on the tuning. However, I have the Racing B twin tip exhaust and it wise inside the muffler. And I do think that it's a little bit quieter than their single outlet exhaust because I think the flow is a little bit different. Now, I could be wrong and it may not matter at all, but that's just what I have convinced myself in my head. So there is, I think there's an internal silencer on this thing as well. If you look in there, it looks like the pipe narrows down a little bit. You're probably not gonna be able to see that on camera. Nope. Which is like kind of annoying, but I just feel like every exhaust manufacturer is doing that shit now. But at the same time, it's like, I'm so old and get off my lawn that it's like, I will give up a few horsepower up top, like S2000, to have a much more quieter, enjoyable like car that like I'm not miserable in. So, you know, what I gave up, probably gave up, I don't know, two, three peak horsepower on the S2000. It's like really good now for like a street car, so. I agree. I feel the same way for the uh, for the Arc 7. Although, I actually want, I, the whole reason I was doing this is because I want a little bit more rotary rasp. Yeah, yeah, the Arc the Arc 7 is pretty quiet. 
The exhaust is stupid quiet on my RX-7. Yeah. I have a giant resonator too, which you guys will see in a moment. But um, anyhow, I'm talking a lot. Let's get to it. We're going to install this. Wait for me because I'm going to bounce. 29.7? Yeah. Yep. Okay. What are your guesses? I think the, re uh, the RE is a little bit lighter. Yeah. 28. 28.4. Oh, it's definitely lighter. It's I'm definitely lighter. All right. So then. I I'm going to say 24 pounds. All right. Wow. That, that big of a difference. Oh, wow. Wow, look how good I am. Oh, you must have weighed it earlier. I swear on my life. <laughs> I swear on my life I didn't. 24.2, all right. That's good. So was that five pounds-ish? I, I already forgot what the first one was. 29, I thought, right? Yeah. Almost 30 pounds? Yeah. I'll take it. It's always better to go down a little bit in weight than up. Um, but again, this racing bit exhaust, very, very quiet. Yeah. You know, if you kids can see, we have supported here. I, I made a mid pipe for this years ago because the exhaust that I originally had on this was like, we used a Magnaflow muffler and it was horrible, horribly loud. I added this. What's this say? Megan Racing. I, I bought a, I must have had a Megan Racing mid pipe and I just chopped it up and I put, this is a Racing Beat resonator that we welded in here and it helped quite a bit but it was still too noisy and then after going to the racing beat too quiet it's like too quiet you literally all you hit for like a completely catless ported rotary that's over 400 horsepower like it's pretty darn quiet all you hear is turbo noise mm -hmm. turbos make the best mufflers they do i mean yeah I mean, there's rotaries that are still definitely very very loud that are turbo but i'm hoping that the the REMEMIA brings back some of that rasp, mm -hmm. which everybody wants to get rid of rasp, but like Rotary has like a very distinct rasp that sounds good if it has a tuned exhaust. I know it's that super high pitch, like I, I can't, I can't describe it. Like it's, it's very difficult yeah, it's to describe. Yeah, it's almost like a little bit of a shriek. Yeah. You know, for your car, I would probably just start with a whatever yeah. mid pipe. Yeah. And then I'll just go and from there. And see how it is with yeah. this, because you may find that it's like yep. plenty quiet. This is like. I, there's no way this is going to be too loud. If anything, it may still be too quiet. But I hope it gives me a little bit more noisy noise. Dude, that the fitment on this thing is so good. Don't mind my. You can see where I melted this out with the old muffler in here. Not the racing beat, the stupid Magnaflow. Yeah. It looks. It looks good and like proper. I always wanted a dolphin tail. Yeah. Hot version killed me. I used to watch the toge battles, Ariamemia with the blue. It was like one of the first like toge monster uh, champion cars. Yeah, that looks so good. And one thing we noticed, like look at these, look at these flanges. Look at like what quality flanges look like. Juicy. Yeah. And they're stainless. So I actually, looking at the piping sizes, I think this is a three and a half inch. Cause this is three and this is clearly like visibly bigger, which like, I guess that maybe works out better. Cause if there is an internal silencer in the tip, which it looks like there is, um, you know, maybe that won't help them. I don't think it's going to hurt flow. Yeah. 
and I don't care if it's a little bit louder because I have the resonator here plus this juicy muffler. So I think everything's gonna like work out pretty good for this setup. I'm, gonna, I'm so excited. I'm gonna get some B-roll shots and then we're gonna start this thing up. Yeah. I'm so pumped. Hell yeah. mind to sound just like, like this this is just i told you i told you this is what i was like missing on the car i was like i want that like shriek to it So he's crying. It's I so think his eyes are tearing. glorious. <laughs> that's that's the only word I have to describe it. So let me say this, kids. I only changed the compressor housing, but I am boosting more. I think I was tuned up to about 16 pounds in with the old compressor housing. So it's not like this tune is like drastically off, right? If this car was never tuned, I would not even like lay into it. Oh more. yeah, yeah. But I'm not I'm not going full throttle. And I'm like letting off as soon as like boost starts to like go past that like 15 psi mark. Yep. So it's like just hitting 16, 17 real quick. Yeah. So that's why like I just want to give a little bit of taste and so everybody can hear it. Are you ready? We'll do another one. All right. <laughs> that's that's how a proper road race should sound. Mm -hmm. Dude, sounds so good. I was like a little apprehensive at first because I'm like, man, this is boomier than the old one. But I also forgot I took my trunk mat out. So there's no insulation back there. And I'm gonna do the same stuff that Matt did to his car when we do the interior change. But when you get on that car, oh, it like, it, ha it, it has that rotary rasp, yeah. that like that shriek that it was missing with the old setup. So, so good. I wish you guys could have saw Matt's face. I think he was crying. I'm pretty sure I saw water in his eyes. I think he was crying a little bit. I don't know bit. what you're talking about. <laughs> I, I, I deny this claim. I mean, I'm really, really, really excited to get this thing back on the road again. 
Um, it's been three years of like, it, actually the last time I actually like drove it in anger or like spiritedly was at Lime Rock when we tested it. That was so long ago. I know, but when you shredded the tire apart? When I shredded the tire apart. I, haven't, I have not like given it a proper drive like ever since. So as far as like, there's no rattling bolts. Mm -hmm. There's no more exhaust leak because we changed that. No the, cool, the new no turbo cool setup. Leak. What? No more coolant leak. No more coolant leak. No more exhaust hitting on the transmission cross member. No more exhaust hitting on the transmission cross member. As far as I can tell, again, like I was a third of a tank of fuel and there was no starvation with that Holly mat. Now, granted the fuel baffle probably was okay like about that, but like I think the fact that there's no fuel starve thus far is a good sign. Mm -hmm. So I think, it, I think that probably resolved that issue. You know, again, I, I don't want to chance it. That's why I wasn't like doing full on pulls, but the tune shouldn't be that much more off, but it will be a little bit more off because it is going above that 16 PSI mark, which is where I was like kind of capped to last time or with the old setup. So, you know, we'll see. I mean, I, like even at hitting 17 real quick, it felt properly healthy. Like I'm probably going to boost 21 or so PSI and just see where. Four, four more PSI, so what, that's like another like 60 horsepower? Well, you have, to, you have to remember that like, that I would only hit 16 like briefly in like maybe fourth and fifth gear flooring it. That's gonna be healthy. Second and third, like I would be limited to like 14, 15 max. So the fact that in second gear, I was like touching 17, five without flooring it, mm -hmm tells me that this is gonna be, I mean, it already feels like like much healthier. And I had you in the car. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's so like 200 pounds, yeah. And like that, like, it, it just feels transformed. Yeah. I'm excited, I'm so excited. We gotta do a little bit to the to the alignment, suspension, get this dialed in for like more friendly hoonage. Um, but that's an easy fix. I think Matt and I can just bang that out here in the garage. It's not that, it just needs more front camber. Yeah, we could check camber and tow easily. That's all that it really needs. Just, just another degree of front camera would be wonderful. But man, oh man, I'm just like so. I'm so excited. Even when I drove this thing the other day, I was like, it's slow, but I, this is a cool car. You know, rotaries are just cool engines. It's um, just so unique. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm missing one. I'm missing a rotary. It needs to get back here like ASAP. <clears throat> Vargas. Where is that thing? It's been over three years, Matthew. That's the million dollar question. If that, if that setup's good, I'm putting it in the NB. The NB deserves a rotary if it, is, if it works. That would three be rotaries. Setup. <laughs> All my Mazdas will be rotary powered. Perfect. Long live the Wankel. That is it for this one, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you like this content, please give us a like and a subscribe. Do all the things to help the engagement. If you think it sucks, tell us if you think it sucks too. I'll gladly answer you, or match you will. So thank you so much for tuning in. We will see you in the next one. Done.